February 24th, 12.14 p.m. District Court, courtroom number nine. All right, let me turn this, the, the audio off. So let's see what we got here. Incident number nine, SL9, closed, perpetrator, Joe Dark, Crime, serial murder, sentence, death. So you got sentence to death. So this is what they were talking about, Angel Star and whatever, when they were detectives. This is what they were talking about. Victims, Edward Jones, Jason Knight, Edith Kirby, Rachel Moss, Jeb Bates, Neil, Neil, Neil Marshall. Marshall? So is that his brother? Head prosecutor, Miles Edgeworth, witness, Lana Scott, Emma Scott. Okay. Executive investigators, Damon Gant, Lana Scott. Head investigator, Bruce Goodman. Investigators, Jake Marshall, Angel Star. Okay. All right. The court would now reconvene for the trial of Miss Lana Sky. Emma didn't come back. Allow me to call the next witness to the stand. The officer in charge of guarding the evidence room on the day of the crime. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Me, Bon? Oh. I'm just a man same as you, wandering the trails of civilization. Occasionally helping the elderly cross, oh, cross intersections when needed. Yes, we get it. Oh, I know. You're a patrolman. As for my name, if you listen hard enough, you'll hear the howling wind calling it out. To be as that is Jake Marshall, your honor. Howling wind? I never heard Edgeworth described that, described that way before. Now, Mr. Marshall, let me ask you something. You were in charge of guarding the evidence room when the day of the crime take, took place. Is this correct? According to the papers, partner. What do you, <clears throat> what do you mean? A desperate old soul is as boundless as the desert sands. No paper can sum it up. Maybe it's best we get on with this quickly. Please share with us our, your testimony on the day of the crime. In plain old English. <clears throat> right, let me sit up. Let me sit up for this. Talk your shit, Marshall. My job was to keep a wary eye on the bone orchard. They say I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. Besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at the time it went down. I'm just an innocent traveling man, so if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. I can't say I'm particular. I particular, particularly care for your attitude. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. Wait a minute. What do you mean by two security systems? I mean, the security cameras and the ID card reader. I reckon that even a cowpoke like you knows about those. Yes, well, what about the fingerprints, fingerprint activated locks on the evidence lockers? Fingerprint activated locks? What kind of newfangled doohickeys are those? He's not being very helpful, bro. He doesn't, do <laughs> this, is your, this is the people y'all hiring. He's not that good with machines or with following orders. Everyone's got their weaknesses now, don't they, Mr. Prosecutor? This one seems like trouble. Okay, Mr. Wright, he's all yours. Southern Sasuke clean? Yeah, I'll try. My job was to keep a way eye on the barn orchard. How exactly did you keep an eye on the evidence room? I just made sure nothing moved into the security camera monitor. That room's so still. Even time dies in there. I was the caretaker who had entered. 
and tired the record recorders. You and heard them? Videos and nothing's wait, I gotta turn this down a little. Videos and nothing aren't that useful. When the time will come, I'd erase the tape. If nothing you unusual is recorded, tapes are to be erased every six hours. Each time I erase a tape, it felt like I was erasing a part of my life. This guy's a flair for the dramatic, but isn't going to do him any good. So in actuality, you don't physically enter the evidence room. And let me save right here, cause I'm paranoid. They said I was supposed to make rounds three times a day, but that ain't my style. But you made your rounds on the day of the crime, right? Ain't you heard a word I said, partner? I told you that ain't my style. Um, I'm afraid I don't understand. No, Desperado. I know let's rules get in my way. No Desperados I know join the police force. So, Mr. Marshall, on the day of the crime? Just between you and me, I didn't set foot in the evidence room that day. There was a rubber glove uh, stuck in the victim's locker. Do you know anything about that? Sorry, partner. Can't say I do. I haven't been in that crypt in weeks. How does this guy avoid being fired? Yeah, bro, he don't do shit. He don't do... Nobody in this game actually does their job except for me, Edgeworth, and... I don't know what it, I guess just the, the lawyers, the only ones that actually do their jobs. Judge don't be doing shit. Police force don't be doing shit. What's going on, bruh? I need to get this job. Y'all hiring? Bes besides, the room's protected by two security systems anyway. Oh, wait, wait. Let me go back. Let me go back to that. used to be a detective, so you used the evidence room in the past, correct? Of course, back in the day, my locker was a gold mine of evidence. And yet, you didn't know about the fingerprint locking mechanism? Sorry, partner, I ain't good with machines. I couldn't even tell you how a bike works. That's quite, uh, incredible. The sensors on the, lock the locker handles can't be seen. It's well known that some detectives are unaware of their presence. Now that you mention it, Detective Gumshoe says something like that too. At any rate, it doesn't seem that this is relevant to the crime. Can you tell us what you were doing when the, time the crime took place? If I remember right, I was at a street side saloon at, at the time it went down. What were you doing in a place like that? I was eating spaghetti. Not even angel steak lunches can beat that parlor's Yeah. Do you mean to tell us? You abandoned your police duties to eat some noodles? Not all desperados eat tacos, partner. This nigga's so stupid. That's not what I meant. I hope this has at least taught you a lesson. That's strange. It's unusual where Edgeworth, this is usually where Edgeworth says, did you not want to raise it, uh, want to raise this year? I'm just an innocent man traveling. I'm just an innocent traveling man. So if you're out of ammo, it's time I hit the trail. Out of ammo? Officer Marshall? That's right, partner. Well, as you call it, evidence. If you plan to pin this to me, uh, pin me to this crime and you better draw otherwise you're just wasting my time my steel horse is waiting to carry me back west into the sunset hmm one thing seems clear despite being responsible for guarding the evidence room the witness does not appear to have seen anything Texans don't take orders from anyone everyone knows that that's your job bro apparently your superiors don't Okay, I have a trunk card up my sleeve, so I best keep my cool. Before I use it, though, I, I better up the ante. Oh, he's talking about the blood. Hold on. I ain't got no ammo, bitch. I got the Glock with the dick. Objection. Officer Marshall, doesn't it strike you as odd? 
That is you being called in to testify like this? After all, you weren't in a security room at the time of the crime. And yet you dragged me downhill. Explain yourself, pardon. It's quite simple. You left a very large trail behind at the scene. Or to be exact, a handprint. Hmm. That's some real good, partner. Like I said, I'm the caretaker of that crib. I pay my respects. That is, make my rounds about once a month. It's only natural my fingerprints will be there. I only wish it were, officer. Why was it white? But you see, your fingerprints were covered in blood. Witness, what is the meaning of this? Your blood-stained fingerprints were at the crime scene? The blood was wiped away, however, a luminal test clearly revealed this. Well, Officer Marshall? It seems to me, there ain't a person in this room with a head on his shoulders. I take it you have an explanation then, Officer Marshall about the bloodstained fingerprints. Very well, you may begin your testimony about your fingerprints. Found at the scene of the crime. Like I said, it's only natural for fingerprints to be in that evidence room. One of them just happened to be at the same place at this bloodstained handprint. The murderer touched the locker where my fingerprint was by chance. That's your excuse? Our hands just ended up in the same plate. That's your excuse? Okay. The blood stain and the fingerprint are completely unrelated. <laughs> this is just a terrible excuse. Or didn't you know that the murderer was wearing gloves? See, I had nothing to do with it. It's a terrible excuse, my God. Hmm. Hmm. The witness's explanation appears valid. Although there's room for doubt. Well, at least he said that last part, bro. At least he said that last part, bro. <laughs> I can't, man. <laughs> Accidentally touched hand prints. Ooh, ooh, the judge is cooked. <laughs> like, like, come on. I, I, we can't exactly prove anything with that. But him just saying... I incidentally had my fingerprint the same spot a bloody hand was. That doesn't seem suspicious at all. The exact same place out of all places to touch. And it still doesn't explain why he was there exactly. He said, in fact, he said he hasn't been there in like three days. Didn't he say that? So is he saying that fingerprint was just there from days prior? Life wouldn't be fun without any doubt, partner. The defense may now cross examine the witness. This guy's hiding something. I can feel it. Now's my chance to prove it. Pressing everything. That's because you, how did you put it? Pay your respects once a month? Yeah, that's right. That and one more thing. That locker happens to be mine. What? What do you mean? I mean what I say it. That's the lock I used when I was a detective. The lock I still use. All that's in there now is a heap of broken dreams. I see. It'd be strange if my prints weren't all over that locker. Apparently his fingerprint data was never removed from that locker locker's programming. He must have been using that locker print lock all this time without even knowing it. Okay, so how did that update exactly? Oh, it, it updated to say that's his own locker. Okay. So then. What about a bloody handprint? Wasn't mine. It's no mister. Please explain. 
My locker is covered with my fingerprints. It just so happened. The chances of that happening are a million to one. On the contrary, one could argue just the opposite. The chances of that not happening are a million to one. Get one thing straight, partner. You ain't gonna get no reward for me with a mere fingerprint. You wanna know why? The blood stain the fingerprint are completely unrelated. Unrelated? Well, they as different as night and day. Kinda like cereal and cereal. Ooh! This nigga is not spinning. What the fuck are you talking about? And there's no way you just said that spontaneously. You've been waiting to say that in court for a long ass time. What the fuck does that mean? Did he think that line was hard? One's got to do with breakfast while the other's a type of murder. Read red. Like, okay, what's that supposed to prove to me? And the judge eating this shit up. He's right. Oh, those seemingly alike. They're totally different. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? It kind of was. <laughs> he, he did not eat with that, bro. I don't see what home, home nims got to do with this. Oh, then you know the murder was wearing gloves. How do you know that? I may be a loner, but I still do my job. I keep up on the reports. There was a blood stain at the scene, thought to be left by the murderer. That's right. It was found in the t Detective Gumshoe's locker. However, no fingerprints were detect or detected on that handprint. Oh yeah, I think we tried that too. Hmm. So that would mean the murderer wearing gloves happened to place their hand on top of Officer Marshall's fingerprint. That's the only logical conclusion. Are you starting to get the picture, partner? The picture? This seal of blood in the desert is just food for the buzzers. There's only one reality, and that's Elias. The security tape? So long as my trial isn't in there, my trail isn't in there, you can't say otherwise. This isn't getting us anywhere, Mr. Wright. Please consider carefully where you're going with this cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Now then, continue your testimony, Officer Marshall. What do you mean by that? You want to tie me to this crime, isn't that right, partner? If so, that video is the only direct evidence you have. But that video is next to useless. It's full of blind spots. Blind spots? Why are you questioning that? Places you can't see. The camera's panning back and forth. The floor isn't shown. If someone was familiar with the camera's position, they could leave the room without being caught on tape. Okay, so that that's what they're saying has happened. Ha, or happened. Okay. And that's probably why that that cloth ended up in that locker the way it did. Because I was saying the whole time, where did old buddy go? I was thinking that maybe there was like some emergency exit, but that can't be it. I mean, that in itself gives us a clue. If they knew exactly where the camera was, they... Come on. We don't have time for your speculations, Mr. Wright. Well, Mr. Wright, if you can show us evidence in this video that indicates Officer Marshall was present, please do so now. I got it. The cloth is right there in his locker. It wasn't there before. I got you, my boy. I saw that. I saw that at the beginning. Allow me to point out your mistake, Officer Marshall. Tread carefully, Mr. Wright, or you might wind up being the one making a mistake. Hold on, let me save. I got you, Marshall. Stop capping to me and tell me the truth. Before I make you end up like a... Uh, 
Arthur Morgan or somebody like that. You know what I'm talking about? Now then, let us have another look at the video. Show us in this in incriminating evidence of the wit. Uh, what the damn? Oh, I got you. I don't, I don't gotta watch all this. Pause. Bitch. Bringing our attention back to the security camera is a mistake I'm afraid you'll soon not forget, Officer Marshall. The days are short in Texas, and so are our tempers. Could you sum up what you had to say in eight words or less? You did this shit, bitch ass nigga. You can clearly be seen in this video. Ooh, got it in eight words, right? Yeah. Exactly eight words. Not bad, partner. The key lies in a certain locker, locker shown in the video. That locker with the white claw sticking out. That was the witnesses, I believe. Now then, let's rewind the video a bit. Oh, the white cloth is it's gone. What's the meaning of this, Officer Marshall? When a crime took place, the white cloth wasn't there. Then it suddenly appeared. There's only one explanation. Officer Marshall, you were in the evidence room at the time of the crime. What's more, you opened your locker when the camera was turned away. Order, order. It would seem that's the only... Hold your horses, side partner. But you got the wrong man. So what if my locker was open? That doesn't mean I'm the one who opened it. The murderer needed to hide something, so he opened the locker and stuck it in. It's not my fault he happened to choose mine. So he actually isn't aware of the technology because the sensor is on like the handle. So he, because he's not aware of the technology only being tailored to his fingerprints, he believes that anybody could have opened the locker. But no, fuck boy, it's only you. So you did it. Or you at least hit that stuff. I don't know if you killed him exactly, but you got something to do with this. Now fess up. <laughs> See, he don't even know he fucked. He, you know you done fucked up, right? No, 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 listen, listen. You know you done fucked up, right? What y'all know about that menace to society? Why is everybody staring at me like I'm a wanted man? This guy isn't just playing dumb. He really doesn't know. Uh, I hate to rain on your parade, but you're the only person who could open that particular locker. Oh yeah, I call your bluff. You say I open that locker, now prove it. Oh no! <sighs> bro, I just pressed A, bro. Oh. <sighs> scared the fuck out of me, bro. I, I had a flawless record so far, bro. I was scared as hell. Right? This, right? Uh, fingerprint sensor? Cooked. <laughs> We talked about this earlier today. The lockers can only be opened by the detectives they belong to. What kind of crazy talk is this? Well, Detective Gumshoe did mention something about this. In any case, the locks aren't that obvious. There are even some people on the force that don't know about the fingerprint locks. So, Sheriff, what do you have to say in eight words or less? Ooh. Man, that'd be jerky tough as hell. The hell? I didn't even get to read what he said. Bro, first look at the badge. It's, uh, it's pretty fire, right? Order, order, order. Witness, explain yourself. If this is a joke, it's the worst I ever heard. 
I assure you, this is no joke, Officer Marshall. Now then, please tell us what you are doing in the evidence room at the time of the crime. Olé! Please answer the question. What is he now, a bullfighter? That's all right, Officer Marshall. I believe we can figure the rest out from here. We can? Have a look at these four floor plans. No, I was making a joke about you, Sean. I was about to say. There's uh, there's no place for someone to hide in the evidence room. Okay, so there is. Okay, cool. So, yeah, he ducked down, seen the camera, ducked down when the camera panned this way, put his thing back in the, in the locker. So, come on, bro. Yeah, Officer Mikas didn't see Officer Marshall. If that's so, then where was the witness? It seems Mr. Wright has an answer. That's right. The only possible conclusion. Well, then, let's hear it. Where was Officer Marshall at the time of the crime? Wait, who is K? Victim, and then this is supposed to be killer? Officer Marshall was standing right here. There, but that's, that's where the victim Detective Goodman was. Correct. Unless the man wasn't Detective Goodman. I believe the victim in the video is Officer Marshall. It was you dressed up like that Detective Goodman. But that's preposterous. Officer Meek has witnessed the, det the detective at the scene. He already testified and said he'd even look the man in the eyes. Once he saw the man's face, he'd know for sure. We already went through this, Edgeworth. Stop playing. May I point out, though, that Officer Meekis did not know Detective Goodman. He also testified about the man's reaction when confronted. When I entered the evidence room, I asked him to show his card, sir. Yes, and how did Detective Goodman respond? He suddenly pulled a knife on me. Uh, uh, he suddenly pulled a knife on me. Something about the officer's story puzzled me. If the man had 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 his ID card, why didn't he just show it? Yes, he would have needed he would have needed it to enter the room, evidence room. So you must have been carrying it. The answer is simple. He couldn't show it. As you can see, Detective Goodman's picture is on his ID card. Oh, I get it. If he showed that, his cover would have been blown. Officer Meekins would have realized the man wasn't Detective Goodman. Do you have any... Uh, uh, my bad. Do you have anything to say, Officer Marshall? You got quite an imagination, partner. Yeah, I got a Demon Slayer imagination. Nigga, I be seeing everything. We got a term for that. It's called circumstantial evidence. Circumstantial evidence? He's still denying it? You're gonna have to do better than that to break a detective. Unless you have all evidence proving I dressed up as a victim. Hmm. I can't say I particularly care for your uncooperative disposition. I can't say I care for your beard, but you don't see me complaining. This is actually the second time you complained about this. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence proven beyond a shadow of doubt? That Officer Marshall dressed up as the victim? Do I have any evidence? Let's see. Well, who am I kidding? I don't have anything like that. Okay, cool. But it's the fact that he knew where the cameras were exactly to get out of that room. I can see the fear in your eyes, partner. Seems you're... You're the one who couldn't take the dance of heat. Ah! This can't be happening. It's so obvious he's the one. What can I do? <laughs> bro, don't let me rely on Miles, bro. I got this myself. 
Let me fight on my with my own sword. Please. It seems your lack of experience has finally been exposed. I'll pass on to you what someone told me when I was just starting out. When you've run into a wall with no place to go, return to the bases. Bro, don't don't use my Hey. Hey. Don't talk about her. I'm telling you, don't talk about me, bruh. You don't get to say that. For me, that would be that would be what Mia used to tell me. Phoenix, try thinking outside of the box. I shouldn't look for proof that Officer Marshall was in disguise, but rather I should look for evidence that came about uh, that came about because he was in disguise. Here's your friend, Sasuke. Canonically, but real real life, no. Why do you think this locker was open in the first place? What do you mean? There's no real reason. There's no reason for Officer Marshall to open his locker at the time of the crime. Yet he did, despite the chance it might be discovered later as it has been. Which means he didn't originally plan to open his locker. According to the defense's argument. Officer Jake Marshall dressed up as Detective Goodman at the time of the crime. Then after the crime was committed, he opened his own locker for some unknown reason. The fact that a white cloth is sticking out of the locker seems to indicate that. Well, the reason why he opened up the locker and the reason why it wouldn't have been planned is because he got, is because Officer Meekers walked in there and them tussling with the knife is why he got stabbed and he was all bloody. So he needed to, he needed to get, I, I don't know if his handprint was originally already, well, either way, he had to wipe out the blood. That's simple. He opened it in order to put the cloth inside. So, just exactly what is this this piece of cloth? Perhaps, perhaps the video is the key to all of our unanswered questions. I don't have any evidence, so this video is my only shot. Very well. Let's take yet another look at the security tape. After committing a crime, the witness opened a locker to put away the white cloth. Let's save right here. No, 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 no. I don't even know what he said to me. See, my, my, my issue is I don't know what question he asked me because it just like went to the video immediately. I'm gonna just say it's, it's when he got stabbed though. Let's let's make sure. Let's let's keep going. For some reason, you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman and enter the evidence room. Though I don't know what to to what uh know to what end yet. Yet. However, something unexpected happened. Officer Meekins barge in in on you when asked to show your id card you pulled a knife on him however officer meekins panicked and the white coat you were wearing was soiled with blood a bloody white coat you couldn't just walk out like that so you hid the coat in your locker not bad partner that is his. Hey, perfect record so far. You've been doing pretty good. Now then, Officer Marshall, are you ready to tell us the truth? 
Looks like I underestimated y'all. I hope you're happy now, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, if you're only half of as persistent as you are today, we all wouldn't have to be here now, now would we? Officer Marshall, tell the court what you did, all of it. All right. It seems the time has come. Confession. I had to do it that day. I couldn't just stand by and let it die. I stole the detective's ID and dressed like him. I planned to take out the evidence. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. I managed to escape. I knew which areas wouldn't be caught on the camera. There wasn't any murder in the evidence room at 515. So the supposed victim was really you. But there's one thing I still don't understand. Traces of a large quantity of blood were found on the floor of the evidence room. If no one was murdered, then could that be? Officer Meekins managed to cut his own hand. My guess is he's the donor. <laughs> it was way too much blood for a small donation. When you say it, you mean do I even have do you need do you ah, do you even have to ask partner? The SL9 incident. Two years have passed since the case was closed. It was going to completely end with the transferal that day. Not if I had anything to do with it. That incident's not over. But what did you hope to accomplish by sneaking into the evidence room? When the case is closed, only that case's lead detective can look through the evidence. I wanted to have a look at it myself one more time. No matter the cost. I don't care what anyone says, partner. That case is mine. But Officer Marshall wasn't in charge of that investigation. Yeah, but it looks like one of the people that was murdered in the... What do they call it? The John Dark? Joe Dark killings. It looks like one of them could be like his brother or somebody. Brother, father, Neil Marshall. That's his name, right? Marshall? Yeah. Why does he care about uh why does he care so much about it? That day was my last chance. That's why. I why did you disguise yourself as Detective Goodman? If I didn't make it look like Goodman was carrying out an evidence transfer, I'd be arrested for stealing evidence, which wouldn't get me anywhere. So you did it to fool the security camera? And the detective's ID card? I stole that the morning of the incident. So that really was, really was why Goodman started filing out that lost item report. I returned his ID card. I left it on the floor in the prosecutor's office, par uh, office parking lot. The ID card I found was left there by Officer Marshall? So essentially, you managed to succeed despite your lack of foresight. What do you mean, partner? I mean the fingerprint activated lock, of course. No matter how well you disguise yourself, you can't change your fingerprints. Under no normal circumstances, you wouldn't have been able to lock, uh, open that locker yourself. But he could because a rubber glove just happened to get stuck in the door. That means Detective Goodman must have opened that locker before Officer Marshall. Yeah. I wasn't expecting Officer Meekins. I knocked him out. Oh, let me go back. You pulled a knife out, knife on Officer Meekins and tried to drive him off. Let's just say I was a little surprised. I only planned on being in the evidence room for no for no more than five minutes. I didn't think anyone would actually come in during that short time. Officer Meekins certainly is a one in a million type of person. Mistaking a detective for an intruder and demanding to be shown his ID. 
I had to think a little more about this his raise this year. When did Edgeworth get so much influence? Anyway, he threw himself at me and I ended up cutting him slightly. I saw it had to turn out that way. With me knocking him out and everything. Uh, by the way, what happened to your knife? Oh, you mean this one? I don't know what to say. Hmm. So you knocked Officer Meekins out and... and managed to escape. I knew which areas were me calling on the camera. So you did your research beho beforehand? This is crazy too, cause thinking about this, I don't know if he was in the court the entirety, the, the entire time, but if he, if he was, that means he was really about to sit there and just let Officer Meekins possibly go to jail for life of a murder he didn't commit the first time around. That's wild. Like, I know he would have to conf confess to a, a crime of himself, but it's like, yo, you trying to steal property versus you possibly sending a nigga to life. He's not a good person. Those who go to, in, into the desert unprepared don't live long, partner. I didn't think it would make, um, make a difference though. Security tape is, is erased every six hours. If all had gone as planned, no footage would have been left. However, you bloodied your coat in a struggle with Officer Meekins. If someone was in the security room when I came out, the jig would have been up. I opened my locker and stashed it in there. What was Officer Meekins doing during that time? What else? He was sleeping like a baby. So what you're saying is on that day. Oh. <clears throat> so what you're saying is on that day. But the blood found at the scene certainly indicates a crime took place. What are you blind? The vet that's shown on the tape is me and I'm not dead yet, partner. So you stole the evidence from the locker? He's following behind his uncle, Marshall D. Teach, snake mindset. Shout out to Big Big Body Teach, Big Body. Actually, no, I didn't. Why not? When I opened the locker, the evidence was already gone. So yeah, Goodman already got there. What? Mr. Edgeworth, where's this evidence? Where's that evidence? It's still missing, your honor. Detective Goodman's locker was already empty. Someone else stole the evidence? Officer Marshall, may I ask you one thing? Fire away, partner. It's a free country. Just remember, I'm also free to decide whether or not to answer. Why did you do this? Say it again. Stealing the detective's ID, injuring a police officer. This is no small offense. Moreover, you're an officer yourself. This will have serious consequences. It can't just be forgiven with a simple cut in salary. Not that salary cuts are ever a valid solution. Like I said, this isn't your case. This one is mine. And I'll do anything it takes to get an answer I'm satisfied with. Hmm. The witness has an unusual amount of zeal. Let's hear more. I can't just forget the S SL9 incident. You know why? But that case was solved two years ago, wasn't it? You got the wrong guy. That's the reason the evidence was stored in the evidence room. Joe Dart was convicted for his crimes. One thing I can say for sure as he deserved a sentence. I remember the Joe Dark case. It involved serial murderers, did it? Didn't it? Well, okay. So this is this is just like okay. So we're talk. We keep bringing back this case from two years ago. 
if we're to believe that Joe, this Joe Dart person actually killed somebody, which I'm inclined to believe that did happen, because if it if this Joe Dart person actually wasn't the serial murderer, then that would mean that Edgeworth convicted someone and brought them to death. <laughs> he sentenced them to death. And I feel like that's too big of like this guilty conscious thing that he would have to deal with for them to wrap up in one chapter the way they're trying to go for, especially since it's supposed to be like some bonus content chapter. So I'm assuming that the Joe Dart person actually did it, but it was probably orchestrated by somebody bigger. Someone bigger is pulling the strings because there's something more to that case than just Joe Dart, Joe Dart went crazy, did something. Something something weird is going on because he won't let this go for some reason. So it's probably someone above him. It may have been a lackey or maybe maybe he did kill some people, but it wasn't. Maybe he didn't kill everybody on that list, but I just had to believe that he actually killed someone because I don't know if they would ride it to where. Edgeworth basically sent us someone to death and they didn't actually do anything. It's too big of a consequence. I don't intend to complain about how it turned out, but there's something that still bothers me. Something went down at that trial. Something no one would talk about. What happened? I don't know. That's why I'm trying to find out. Why is he so concerned with that incident? Maybe I should present him with what I think is his real reason. I had a feeling we wind up here sooner or later. Everyone involved here is related in some in some way to that case. I better take a look, uh, another look at the files. So let's present the case to him. His name is on it, so I'm pretty sure that should be what I present. Objection. Officer Marshall, I think I understand. I think I know why you care so much about the SL9 incident. Sounds like you've been sipping too much cactus juice, partner. I have the SL9 incident file here. The name Marshall is mentioned in here and a list of murder victims. Neil Marshall, are you related to this man? Neil Marshall? Yeah, I'm sure you heard the name two years ago. Hold on, let me go back to that. Okay. Okay, so he was a prosecutor. And they go they go Gant, bro. I don't trust that man, and he always wears gloves too. I do not trust him. Okay. He received the same lies a prosecutor wall you got. What? A prosecutor? He must be talking about the King of Prosecutors award. Now I remember. Prosecutor Neil Marshall. He handled the SL9 case before I did. That's right, he was killed. And the case fell into your hands. But it was his relation to you. He was my brother. I thought so. He was investigating the murders with Damon Gant and then the deputy chief of police. So he was the other guy. Okay. All right. So we had Neil. We had Angel Star. We had Marshall. And then we had Goodman. That looked like a super team to me. The group of detectives I was I was part of worked under them. We were desperate to prosecute the killer. That sound? Joe dark he looked like somebody I can't think of who he looks like though 
my brother fought Dark and was killed. That was the first time Dark left any evidence. That was all we needed. And he used a knife too? <clears throat> what do you mean? My brother couldn't have been killed by Joe Dog. I knew my brother better than anyone. No one could have beaten him in a fight. And that's it? That's your reason for your insane actions? So, okay, so yeah, like I said, Joe Dark actually killed those victims on that list. It's just that his brother was killed somebody up by somebody else to cover, you know, but they, they used Joe Dark as a scapegoat to say that he did it too. So, Gant, what's up with you, Gant? Your fingerprints are all over this case. Talk to me, my boy. Talk to me. Remind me of the fixer dude from Cyberpunk Edge Runner. It's not from Cyber. Well, I mean, maybe somebody looks like him, but it's not from Cyberpunk that I'm thinking of. I can't. I don't know what anime it is. It's more to my brother's death than what the records say. No matter how much you try to hide it, you can't fool me. Well, at least one thing's for certain. Now we know what happened at the police department on the day of the crime. That was the last day that S SL9 its uh, case could be re reopened. Not satisfied with the resolution, Officer Marshall planned to steal the evidence. Disguising himself as Detective Goodman, he entered the evidence room. Officer Meekins confronted him, so he rendered him unconscious and fled. Yes, this mystery has finally been cleared up. No murder took place at the police department that day. The things that happened by chance never cease to amaze. At exactly the same time as the murder at the prosecutor's office, this fake murder was going on at the police department. Chance? It's got to be more than just that. If no one uh, no one was murdered at the police department on the day of the crime, that means the murder in the prosecutor's, uh, prosecutor's office parking lot was the real one. Which in turn means only one person could have committed the crime. Chief Prosecutor, Lana Scott. But wait, a verdict wasn't reached in yesterday's trial. Objection. Which is why we examined the incident at the police department today. But there's only one reason defend the defendant was not convicted yesterday. There yet remained the mystery of the simultaneous, simultaneous uh, murder at the police department. It seems to me this boy's got to draw on your partner. Stop dick eating! Everybody dick eating! Everybody! Emma, Marshall, the judge! Why do y'all love Edgeworth like this? I cook this man every time I'm in front of him. Every time. 4 0 against this man. Never lost a goddamn time. Jordan versus John Stockton. Y'all keep dick eating this man for what? He is nice, Biakia. Biakia wins fights. Actually, no. Biakia lose too. Biakia be getting his ass kicked too. What fight has that man won? Against Renji? The man who gets his sword broken every five episodes he's in? I ain't trying to hear it. Get this man out my face. Well, it's not even it's not even your fault, Edgeworth. It's not your fault. I be beating your ass. It's everybody else's fault for hyping you up. You shouldn't even be in. You shouldn't be versus me. Y'all need to bring back that other dude. The evil objection guy. Whatever his name. Karma. Yeah. Bring back karma. Because them dirty methods is the only way y'all could, could act, get close to me. Our, sir, our, our sole murder took place at the prosecutor's office. The only suspect is Lana Scott. And the testimony of one Miss Angel Star is completely incontestable. Incontestable? 
she didn't see the crime. She didn't see a, a five five minutes of the whole incident and lied on stand. But it's incontestable. If you have a response, make it a single word or less. Cap. That good enough? I rest my case. Oh, that's a bad case. We're going to cut that apart. Come on, right? Come on, right? Weak again. What? Br turn off this music. <laughs> turn off this music. The case is not wrapped up. What is this? T turn this shit off, bro. Turn that bitch. The fuck you doing? Turn that shit off. Well done, Mr. Wright. Thanks to you, I didn't need to waste my time. Just proving an alleged murder at the police department. Bro. Oh. <laughs> this man gets the most, like, Mickey... Mickey... Battle wins ever. <laughs> the apparent murder on the security camera's tape really was fake. But I didn't realize that would end up proving Lana guilty. It didn't prove her guilty. We didn't we didn't add any more evidence to prove that she's guilty. All we proved was that the man Meekins didn't kill him. And Marshall was up there frauding it up. They didn't get more evidence to say it was Lana. I understand like th this part of the, the case, we are basically stalling for time, but they also didn't prove it was her. They have one witness who continuously lied. How many times are we gonna take the, the testimony for liars and then use that as our only evidence for what happened? And then really, all other than that, we have the picture. Now then, the time for the verdict has arrived. The court finds the defendant. We're going to eject Emma. Your, your honor, wait. Emma. Defense has an objection, a, objection, a scientific objection, right? What do you mean, right? Mr. Wright. Are you this girl's guardian? No. How old do you think I am? Your honor. Uh. Please, your honor. I'm all, all I'm asking is for your, uh, a minute of your time. Please hear me out. Mr. Edgeworth, please. I don't want to leave any loose ends. You want a minute? I'll give you three. Look, he's so, he's so nice. He's so nice. Hi. I was kind of in shock. I mean, finding out the SL9 incident referred to the Joe Joe Dark killings. Okay, what does that case have to do with them exactly? I know they were on the case, but why were they affected by this case as far as the victims goes? What are their last names? Sky. All right, both. Damn, look at Joe Dark. Look at that man. That man look evil as hell. <laughs> look at that silhouette, bro. Oh my God. Yeah, that nigga did it. They're, they're both skies. Okay. Well, nobody named Sky died. Uh, I was thinking maybe a lover potentially, but I don't know about that because... Why would Emma be that affected too? They were okay, but they were witnesses to it, apparently. Hmm. Okay. As she mentions it. The names of both Scott's, uh, both Scott sisters were in that file. But that's when I figured it out. I mean, what Officer Marshall was trying to do that day. So I knew his fingerprint had nothing to do with the crime. 
That left only one thing, the other handprint. You mean the traces of blood found on Detective Gumshoe's locker? But no fingerprints were found on it, right? No, but I figured it out if I examined it scientifically. I'd be sure to find a clue. So I ran over there and looked at it again. So did you find something? Um, no. It's a joke, right? Sorry, I guess I'm not much of a scientific investigator after all. Why are you wasting my fucking time, Emma? Um, is that all? Please don't be mad. I'm just a high school student. I understand that. Why did you take the stand if that's all you're going to say, though? And I'm just an attorney. But, Mr. Wright, those traces of blood are the only clue we have. If we can't find something wrong with them. Please, Mr. Wright, you're a professional. If anyone can save Lana, it's you. Me? Oh, boy. Time's up. Now then, Mr. Wright. With regards to the incident at the police department, does any reasonable doubt remain? Um, it appears the defense is troubled by the other blood mark. Looking at the floor plans, a handprint was discovered around here. Is there a problem with this? Mr. Wright, I'm sorry I can't be of more use, but still, if you can't find anything wrong with that blood mark, Lana will be... Please answer my question, Mr. Wright. We don't have all day. We should, though. Y yes, Your Honor. If ever I needed to be to concentrate, it's now. What could be wrong with that handprint in Detective Gumshoe's locker? Could there be something I'm missing? Of course, there's an issue. I don't know what it is, though. This handprint left at the crime scene clearly shows a contradiction. The only thing that seems clear is you're grasping. You're grasping, Mr. Wright. You've been staring pretty intently at those floor plans. Tell me, is there a problem with them? Yes, this is strange. Take a good look at these floor plans. Something is missing. Missing? You mean something hasn't been drawn on there? Yes, yeah, something that, when drawn, will completely change the meaning of the blood mark. Okay, so we have like that pool of blood that we still haven't we haven't explained away. Let us pray to de defense isn't simply trying to buy time. Very well, Mr. Wright. With all this evidence here, there's got to be something I can use. The question is, which item can prove something is missing in the floor plans? Right here. Unstable jar, right? That's the only thing I could think of. That's my first- Man, fuck that. I'm not even- I'm not even checking again. I'm going with my gut, bitch. As they say back west, even a blind man can hit with buckshot. That is, so long as he's facing the general direction. It seems Mr. Wright not sure which direction to face. It's no use. The more evidence there is, the greater the chance of me being wrong. Oh, I got it wrong? I was confident as hell. I'm surprised they didn't take no life from that. This Mickey is hell. They didn't take no life from that. Or I guess that was a freebie since I didn't get anything wrong before. They didn't take any. Okay. That kind of shook me. The blue badger. There's not really much anything else with blood on it. Let's go with the blue badger. Bam. What about that piece of plywood? 
the Blue Badger, mascot of the police force, defender of the truth, guardian of proof. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. Please look at the floor plans of the crime scene. The Blue Badger is not here. So? So watch what happens when we put him in. This is where he was dancing at the time of the crime. Well, or, well? Well, what? That's right, so long as the blue badger is dancing here, it would be impossible to place a handprint at the spot of the locker. I don't know about impossible, but okay. What? DS version of the game kinder. It, it's done that before to where they didn't take any dam. I didn't take any damage from it. Maybe it was like what I had to do before. Whenever, whenever you have a chance to get like lose life from getting something wrong, it'll usually show the meter blinking. So it means it can't be done. What are you saying? Blood traces were undeniably found on that locker. Don't look at me. I didn't put it there. Mr. Wright, think about it. Think about think it through scientifically. Emma. On that afternoon, Officer Meekins was the one who brought that blue badge to the evidence room, right? After you put it down, it would have been impossible to leave a handprint on that locker. So that must mean this blood mark was left there before the blue badger was brought in. Oh, wait, why am I talking about it? Was left there before the blue badger was brought in? Just one moment. I will not allow such far-fetched ba balder dash in my courtroom. I'm the same nigga that was bribed with a lunchbox. What is he talking about? It may sound far-fetched, your honor, but it's the only possible explanation. On February 21st, in a police department's evidence room, blood was spilled not once, but twice. But how? One time was captured on this tape, taken by the security camera. Officer Meekins cut his hand from which a trivial amount of blood fell. The problem is, the other time. Someone bled prior to the struggle shown on this tape. It had to have been. It had to have been. Detective Goodman when he was really murdered. Okay, okay, hold on. And I, ca I called this as soon as it happened too. I said how this autopsy is reported is weird. Because they say they say right here, he died within an hour and a half of four thirty, or uh, uh, four p.m. And that that led everybody to saying, okay, so it happened at five thirty. But I was like, no, I mean it's it's within a time frame. Because they weren't exact with that exactly. And look right here, four twenty. So yeah, in in the time frame of four twenty. Cause he must have that that means too that he must have went in there with somebody else because he didn't show his uh badge id and that also means whoever's badge id is likely who the person who did it and that they had to be a detective or somebody in the police force gant what's up buddy that's ridiculous i refuse to accept your absurd claim the murder, the murder portrayed in the security tape has been proven to be a fake. However, that does not explain a blood mark found on the locker. So then, assuming this murder you, you purport, purport really happened, when did it take place? I demand you show evidence that proves when it occurred. When did the first incident occur? It happened between the time 4.20 to 440 to summarize the defense claims that 
Prior to Officer Meekins being cut by Jake Marshall, who was posing as Detective Goodman, another incident took place in that evidence room. That's right, the blood mark on the, the locker proves this. Very well. Then tell us, when did this first incident occur? As Miss Edgeworth said, proof must be presented. Proof that shows when a murder took place? There's only one piece of evidence that could show that. Now then, would the defense please present this, this evidence? What shows, see this is what I mean, meant Ellie. Whenever I see that little meter right there blinking, this is when I have a chance to get it wrong. What shows when the first crime took place? So we have the autopsy, but I also believe that we can use the ID record. But the ID record isn't concrete. I think I had to pair this with something else. So I'm gonna use the autopsy and hopefully that's right. This is the proof. It's quite simple, you see. If it's so simple, then don't get it wrong. Oh well. Uh, so it's not the autopsy. The autopsy, which tells us when the no mother the time frame of the death, is not that. It leaded me to say it happened with the uh, the blue badger. So let's go to the ID record. I guess we're using the ID record to see when Meekins came in there to say that the panel wasn't there before. So prior to five or 450 is when a murder happened. So it would have to be between four and 450 since we're using the blue badger thing as our foundation. If this isn't right, then you lying. If the crime took place inside the evidence room, then the killer would have would have had to enter it. And in order to do so, an ID card would have been required. An ID card? Oh, the ID card record. Officer Meekins brought the blue badger panel into the evidence room at 4.50. Let's see here, 4.50 p.m. If the crime took place be uh, before that time, then it would be 4.40. Ah. Ah. Hmm. Miles Edgeworth, just what have you done? I never would have figured you had the nerve, boy. Drop the act, witness. It doesn't take a lot of thought to figure it out. It could have, or uh, figure out it couldn't have been me. Hmm. No, I ain't getting it. Hmm. I'm afraid I don't understand either. It's clear from the luminol test that blood was there. However, when did the second, t when the second t crime took place? Both Officer Meekins and Officer Marshall failed to notice the blood. That means the blood from the first crime was wiped away by the real murderer. I would have just, uh, I would have had just 10 minutes to murder the victim, carry his body away and clean up the blood. Unfortunately, that's physically impossible. That would mean the crime must have taken place before Mr. Edgeworth entered the evidence room. Let's look at the chart again. So it happened in between the times of 420 to 4, 440, like I said. There's only one other card uh, number remaining. 77777777. Seven, 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 seven. Talk about a lucky number. But wait, that doesn't make sense. How could Detective Goodman have entered the evidence room? All he had to do. He went in there with somebody that per that that per it has to be Gant, bro. It has to be Gant, bro. It's you, bro. Fuck, fuck, boy. Since there's no record of his car being used beforehand, he must have entered along with the real murderer. That's the only plausible explanation. He went in with seven, 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 seven. 
Mr. Edgeworth, please look into this ASAP. Find out whose ID number is 77777777. That's one seven too many, your honor. Unfortunately, I'm unable to look up the owner of the ID card, at least at present. What? Explain yourself, son. The ID card number 77777777 belongs to someone with the rank of captain or hot. You gonna die tonight. You gonna die tonight. You gonna die tonight. You gonna die. I was on your ass, Gant. The first time I saw you, I knew what you were, fuck boy. We getting you out of the paint. See, Ashworth is good. Nah. 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 We not we not giving you props just for doing the right thing. Do better. Uh, someone who is a so-called executive officer, big brain. So you know, I try, I try. We don't we don't have the authority to inquire into such a person's identity. But that's ridiculous. Just how I'm not finished talking, Mr. Wright. There's one situation in which we can be granted such authority. An official charge filed against an executive is, is accepted. An official charge? I I accused that? Come on, let me do it. You're all alike, aren't you? With your cover-ups and your forgeries. That's how the prosecutor's office operates. And the fact that the fact that Edgeworth got the same award that Marshall's deceased brother ended up getting, if we're to believe that Gant also had a hand in murdering him, he was probably marking him from death. I don't know if it was like some taunt to him or something like that, but the same people or Edgeworth was kind of set up in this situation. And the person that died two years prior had the same award. So I feel like that's Gant's way of saying, you next. I'm killing your stupid ass next. Or I'm doing something to you. Lock you up, killing you something. Because apparently the higher ups don't fuck with Edgeworth. I take pride in my work, Officer Marshall. I would appreciate it if you would keep your slander to yourself. Slander, is it? Okay. Let me ask a question. Yes. No, not to you. The ha. Huh? The defendant sitting over there. Unjust police. Ah! Corrupt police! I, th I thought they were always the good people. Y'all little executive. L Lana? Don't be stupid. She's been charged with murder. Of course we looked up looked up her ID number and it's not seven 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 seven. Don't play me for a fool, partner. That's not what I want to ask. All I want to know is one thing about that incident. The SO9 incident? Answer me this, Chief Prosecutor. In that trial two years ago, did you really only use one, use legit, wait. Did you really only use legitimate evidence? Hmm. Do you need the witness to repeat his question, Chief Prosecutor? I heard him fine, Mr. Edgeworth. Two years ago, I was in charge of this uh, prosecution for that trial. At a time, we... Occasionally, we felt the powerlessness of the law. At least, I did. L Lana! I became a prosecutor in order to suppress crime with the law. But before I realized it, we were the ones being suppressed by the law. Defendant, just what are you saying? I'll ask you again, Chief Prosecutor. During that trial two years ago, did you really present all the evidence in court? 
Can you look at me? And the best gay in that crime in the eyes say that you did. Chief Prosecutor, you didn't. I don't have to, Officer Marshall. Why don't you answer him? Drastic crimes require drastic measures. That's just the way it is. We did what we had to do in order for him to get the verdict he deserved. But Lana, even if it involved forging evidence, this is this is Ellie's girl, by the way. So yeah, Ellie got him one. Nah, nah, evil, evil, evil. Ain't no, that ain't no. Now we hyping that up. Now we hyping that up. Y'all didn't hype up karma when he was doing his evil objection. Y'all wasn't hyping up karma. Now we hyping up Lana. Hell nah, boy. Hell nah. It was for justice. Listen, I'll give her this. This Joe, this Joe Dark person, he definitely did it. But she also in this covered up the murder of his brother. So I'm not hearing it. I'm not hearing it. Justice. What type of justice? Ashworth was innocent. Uh, innocent. Yeah, we know that. Karma. No, karma. Karma is funny. Objection. <laughs> so that's why they were both witnesses, because Emma knew they were in a wrong, but they must have got a call from the higher ups. Like that was like, yo. Hey, yo, we need we need him out of here. Y'all be witnesses to this. I know y'all didn't see nothing, but it happened. And they probably, she probably got another call in this case. Hey, you better take the fall or I don't know. Listen, Sasuke, I never said I didn't like evil is for the greater good. I don't like selfish evil. Duh. Listen, even in the greater good sense of the matter, she was still going to possibly let somebody slide with murder. If we're to believe that Gant actually murdered somebody else. We have to, there, there, there's something more going on with this case than just this serial murderer. He, Marshall is 100% convinced that there's something else to this. Forgery of evidence, not coming forth with all the evidence. So if she's covering up against crimes, I'm a presser on that. I can't say that's the greater good. John Marston is a liar, Dutch said so. Who's a gesture better, Von Karma or uh, Winston? Who is Winston Payne? Who is Winston Payne? Uh, all I know is Karma's Karma's is hilarious. That uh, that objection sounded like the devil. Uh, do I, do I still have it? I don't think I have it anymore. See, that's why I'm talking about. No, no. Ooh, order, 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 order. Lana's remark caused such a stir. The chaos in the courtroom could not be quelled. The conclusion of the trial will have to wait until the following day. We went to day four? Oh my God, bro. Why is this case so long? Life is just death, taking this time Who gon' take it from my hand? Was lonely before friends I'm holding my own hand And taking these bad shots Just hoping they go in Everything folds in